I'm here with international singer and songwriter Taylor Swift, a guest of this week's ARIA Awards. Thank you for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. You started off as a country artist, though you've always done more, at least reached out to more people than an obvious country audience. Do you still consider yourself a country artist? I do because of Nashville. I do because, for me, the storytelling involved in, in country music is what threads together my music. And that's what I what made me want to write songs was the storytelling of country music and how it's got such detail and it's it's singing songs about your life about your real life and the way you live it um, and to me that's what makes music country everybody's got their own opinion about what makes country music country or what makes this sort of music fall into this genre but at this point I just don't really think too hard about what people are gonna say about what genre my music falls into or what category it's it's filed under because I don't think that the fans think that way. I think when they listen to a song they think that one applies to my life, that one doesn't, that one applies to my life, that's what I'm going through right now. I don't think they're like there really should be more fiddle on that, you know? It's not it's not what the fans think. It, it was though quite strong pop focus with the, the new album. There's a couple of songs on it which are very easily uh, marketable ac across even more genres than you, you currently um, cover. Did you want to stretch yourself musically? Was this just where your songwriting was heading? I'm 22 and I was making my fourth record. So I think at that point you have two choices. You can either continue to make music the same way that you've done it, the first three records, or you can change and you can evolve. I'm not saying change to the point where your fans don't recognize you because I think that that's, that's going too far, but in order to push myself and to jump out of my comfort zone and to show my fans I want to continue to make music that's exciting for you. My biggest fear going into this record was I never wanted to hear anyone say, oh, it sounds, sounds like her last record, it sounds like all her other stuff. That to me was, was a scarier criticism than, whoa, she's changed her style. That, that to me wasn't as scary. What is it that, that you set yourself as challenges when you write a new album? I think when you write a new album, I, 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 I fear a lot of things when I'm making a new album, but mostly I fear that, uh, like that, it, that my fans aren't going to love it the way that they've loved other things, or it's not going to stand out, or it's not going to be like a, a big important album in the in the course of my career or it's not going to make an impact. You know, there's a difference between people thinking something's good and then there's an impact album. You learn, you kind of learn that over, over time. Like, there are the songs that have really, that have been hits, but people don't really remember them or scream them out in a concert. I wanted this album to be impactful. The last tough question. How do you feel about being called T-Swizzle? <laughs> I'll pretty much take almost any nickname. Um, at this point, like, the... Like, there are a bunch of Australian fans who call me Swifty. And then there are a bunch of people who call me T-Swizzle. And then there's, um, what's the other ones? Tay-Tay I get a lot. Um, I, I pretty much respond to anything at this point. The T-Swizzle thing cracks me up, though, because I'm like, it kind of implies that I'm like, like hardcore or tough or something, which clearly I am. Clearly you are. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. It's good talking to you. Yeah.